Bachi Bachi Book Club. Welcome, ladies, gentlemen, those who lie betwixt or outside to yet another episode of the Bocce Bocce Book Club. I'm your host, the Samoa Joe of blowing dough like Tommy Wiseau, Squill, and I'm of course joined by my faithful companion, Walk. How goes That's it, right, friend? Squillium Tentacles, and I'm gonna cut you off right here. I am the main event of this show, so why don't I introduce it? Go ahead. Because I don't want to, and I don't get paid enough to be here to announce the show. But aside from that, how are you doing, buddy? Um, so definitely better than you, uh, <laughs> considering, considering that your voice is drained, uh, where were you? Oh, oh, nowhere. Uh, only All Out 2024, also known as Live Leak Wrestling Style. Yeah, so you saw um, a series of incredible murders. Uh, how was that? Um, I hope Brian Danielson recovers quickly from his death, mm -hmm. uh, along with Swerve Strickland recovering quickly from death. Uh, I mm -hmm. hope he can get out of whatever the needle was full of. It, um, yeah, I don't... Uh, assumably, like, anthrax? Uh, that, would, that would make sense for Hangman. Mm -hmm. uh, He's not known for using anthrax. I mean, I don't know him personally. Maybe he is, but... I mean, uh, chemical weapons does seem like something that would have happened if Onita got a bigger budget. I imagine that Onita, if he had a very large budget, would just have a nuclear bomb deathmatch in, like, the middle of a stadium. Mm-hmm. At... It just seems in character for the guy. It's just sort of like terrorism with extra steps. Pretty much. But that's why we love him. And did and the uh, the city of Chicago warmly greet uh, Chicago wrestling legend Jack Perry? Um, not as bad as you'd think. <laughs> Interesting. Um... You know, it ranged from, like, two times people were chanting, Oh, cry me a river. Which is uh, pretty good. It's, it's weird, because Jack Perry is weirdly over mm -hmm. in Chicago. Uh, mostly to boo him, but also to sometimes cheer him. We have kind of a bipolar relationship with Jack. Interesting, because the, the, the punk brawl-in thing sort of made him cool. When he came back, yeah, because his heel character was not over beforehand, where he was being a douchebag. Mm -hmm. uh, but then after the whole punk thing, I guess he's cool now. Which no, is he's sick as fuck. The heel turn involved the House of Torture, which normally should, you know, end Kill your career. Your career, yeah, yeah. But uh, Mr. Jack Perry or Dick Togo. If you throw enough chimpanzees at a typewriter, eventually you get Jack Perry. Mm-hmm enough jungle chimpanzee stop me um, uh, we oh, 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 oh. what are we talking about today squill well we're talking about none other than vulcan uh or in his proper russian tongue magomed khan abnulievich gamzat khanov which uh, i wonder why they shortened that one that's a uh, weird way of saying Ringo Starr, circa first Beatles album. Yeah, yeah. His, uh, he's a weird one in terms of pro wrestling. Mm -hmm. Because ostensibly when the Soviet Union was doing the collapsing, um, and <laughs> MMA slash pro res in Japan was having a boom, they knew Sambo was hot shit, so they sent a bunch of talent scouts um over to the ussr and interesting akira maeda happened to find them who's a brick shit house uh and bring him to rings and then rings went through this weird uh period in which it would do um works 
and then shoots, and sometimes there are shoots build as works, and works build as shoots. Uh, so nothing means anything. Um, that seems like but, good booking to me, brother. Yeah, it was a great idea. Um, and so Volk became incredibly good at pro wrestling, and then, you know, what, what, do, you, what do you think? He's actually very good in a shoot as well. Um, he is the primary coach of Fedor Milienko. Um, so who goes on to do nothing in particular? Oh yeah, nothing, that's important. nothing of note. Uh, uh, and for, probably haven't heard of him. For the MMA fans in the audience, which I would assume is a fairly large proportion, uh, if you go watch uh, Fedor's very early fights, uh, you can normally see Volkan looking very bored, uh, cornering him. It's so that is always a treat. It's so strange how this is the second time we've had a submission-based guy who looks bored the whole time. Which adds to their aura. It does add to their aura of being bored, but it's badass, I guess. Mm-hmm. Also of note, just biographical information, because it proves that time is a flat circle, <laughs> is that he served in the same regiment, because he is from Dagestan, Russia, um, which, you know, is a place that's been put on the map in recent years by Habib Nurmagomedov um, and his Probably whole haven't legal heard of FC either. camp. Um, but as it turns out, Habib's late great father, Abdul Map, was in the same regiment in the uh, Soviet military with Volkan. It's funny um, how shit like that works out, right? Yeah, it just turns out that Dagestan is uniquely min-maxed to create, you know, great martial artists. So, uh, what do you know? It, it's basically the Enoki Friendship Island. The Enoki Friendship Island of Russia. Yep. Uh, with an appropriate amount of brain damage. Well, that was a given, considering Antonio Inoki. What's deeply funny, of, do you know with how they got Volkan out of Magomed Khan Abnulievich Gamzat Khanov? Um, was it the Shawn Michaels camp of naming things? It just saying, you're an American dragon. Yeah, so they, they, they said, well, Khan is short for Magomed Khan, which is like, sure. Oh, um, sure. I guess they could have done Volk Khan, but, and then Volk is just, like, Russian for wolf. So they're like, oh, oh hell yeah. Man. So you're wolf Russian guy. Hell yeah, that's, okay, that's pretty sweet now that I know that. Well, and what's deeply interesting to me is that, um, like, now we're used to the fact that there's, like, a um, sort of uh, ethnically distinct, like, non-Slavic... Um, Muslim minority in Russia, um, and like the Dagestanis very much feel different than, um, you know, your stereotypical idea of like a Slavic Russian guy because yeah. they are different. But no one knew what the hell Dagestan was, so they very much his presentation is like, ooh, scary Soviet Union Ivan Drago man. He, he for it's sure really is. Funny. He's like a huge shifted Ivan Drago. Mm hmm. And they're they're sort of billing him as that, and he's not that, but he is still super, super cool. It's so funny, the way that he comes out, is that he has the equivalent to, like, 90s Japanese Roman Reigns entrance mm -hmm. music. Uh, and just out comes out a dude wearing a sweaty t-shirt and his uh, blue sweat uh, uh, tights. Mm -hmm. in the uh, rings-issued kick pads. Just not giving a shit. He is not trying to build an aura. He's just out there to swing and bang and grab and spadank. Which is pretty fucking awesome. No, it's um, sick as hell. He was also nicknamed the Magician, um, which oh. <laughs> sort of puts him in a Hechicero. Uh, uh, no, I was thinking Nigel McGuinness. Oh, that too. Uh, which weird submission guys uh, just all get this? Uh, Hang on a minute. Thing, there is there Desmond is Desmond Wolf. Sorry, Desmond Wolf. On. Yeah. Wolf. Oh. Think about it, and there, then stop thinking about it. I weren't able to. I wasn't able to dig them up for this. Um, but apparently he did do actual like commercials. Um, in oh, Japan. Yeah. Where he would do like magic tricks, which the <laughs> thing that uh, you're going to. 
I mean, that's about on the same tier as Bob Sapp having a big head and then advertising ice cream. And, and or for whatever a while, that apparently, there's a, uh, uh, a variety show uh, on Fuji TV, which also carried rings, where he would have like a weekly segment, which is oh, hilarious. That's really funny. Yes, it was on Wednesday nights. Oh! So you could either be watching Dynamite or Vulcan doing magic tricks. Yeah. And which is really, really better there? Uh, depending on if Chris Jericho is mm-hmm. on. Then we'll we'll go to the magic tricks? The magic trick is turning off my TV It's if it's Chris Jericho. So... What I'm going to say before we actually get into the matches is we're talking about the the work shoot sort of nature of this mm-hmm. is that I believe all of these matches uh, are on his MMA record. Um, they Sorry. are not. They they are not shoots. Okay, no. They're very much like late '90s, early 2000s. That's when it starts to become an actual shoot promotion. Um, by the time he'd go on to fight, like, Big Nog um, and do stuff like that, mm-hmm. it's very much... Basically, once Fedor actually debuts, it's a shoot promotion. Yeah. But these are these are pro wrestling matches, um, so I just want to say that. Mm-hmm. We'll get to where it gets ridiculous, how these dudes are even getting close to grappling with this dude. Because, yeah, realistically, he can kill all of them. Every single one of them. Except for maybe the uh, the man uh, we're going to talk about first, uh, which is, how do you want to p- decide to pronounce his uh, name for this podcast? Um, uh, hang on. It's The first match we're going to watch tonight is Vulcan versus Dick... Um, Virage... Virage? Bridge. Bridge? Wait, wait, Bridge. we're going to ask, we're going to have this right now. We're going to have, uh, a, I'm going to have AI give this to me. Oh, okay. Taking our job. It, it, so, it, it basically sounds like, is basically what it sounds like. <laughs> Fucking um, Dutch. Yes, yeah, so, um, Dick Vrrr. We're going to call him, uh, Richard Refrigerator for, uh, the duration. Um, but he, Dutch people, we do not, you have a fake language. Uh, we do we not respect, respect your you. fake language. Yeah, the individual Dutch people, um, like Bas Rutten are lovely, but... We do love language, Bas. I do, um, I have a friend who speaks Dutch who said that it basically sounds like um, English or German said in a funny voice, um, which is very much true. If you're trying to do a Gollum voice, I suppose. Um, but we could choose Dick or we can go with the other name he was built in on this card. Dick mm-hmm. Fly. You can't make this up. Hell it's yeah. Dick Fly. Dick Fly. Dick, Dick Fly. Fly. Dick Fly. Oh, yeah, he's so, so do you know the, his background? Because this is going to get kind of interesting. Kickboxer? If you throw yeah, a so- rock in a... Uh, 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 Dutch land, the mm-hmm. Dutchanese, uh, you're gonna hit a kickboxer in this yeah, era? but specifically, he came from, um, the Chris Dolman gym, which, uh, produced some other kickboxers, um, which, uh, you might have heard of, uh, among them, the Overeem brothers in Baz Rutten. Oh! Um, yeah, and it basically... During the talent scout thing, where like Maeda and some of the other guys like Fujiwara were going across the world to try to like set up a Mortal Kombat tournament, was you know their idea of shoot style. Yeah, um, trying to set up more white boy challenges. Exactly, they found these guys, and later on, um, well, at about the same time period, uh, our our boy Dick Fly, um, his stable <laughs> mate. Uh, Boz Rutten would be killing shit in Dan Kreis. Uh, like, actually, he's beating the shit out of Doug, because he, much like many mixed martial artists of the time, has a natural strength, which is being able to flex his wrists better? I'm pretty sure is the way that I heard it. I'm I'm doing Joe Rogan math here, that's where I heard mm-hmm. this fact from. 
Yep. Where he's able to flex his wrists better, so it basically is just a punch. Yeah, he had to, like... You know when someone in a movie has to, like, dislocate their wrist to get out of a handcuff or something? Yeah. Boz somehow did that with his... to throw a punch, and it, it gave him, like, permanent nerve damage on one of his, uh... Oh my god, really? Lungs. Yeah, because he was hitting them so fucking hard, bare knuckle. Jesus fucking Christ. Yeah, oh. one of his... He has, like, um... One of his, uh... Arms is, like, permanent, like, muscle atrophy... Um, wow. because of how much damage he did to it. Jesus. Yeah. Ah, uh, um, yeah. So, wow. Dick Fridge, uh, is very <clears throat> much a amazing striker, um, at least for pro wrestling at this point. Mm -hmm. and we talked to, I've said in my, um, Sayama video, that what I really enjoyed about Sayama in pro wrestling is that there's a lot of, I can only describe it as generic catch wrestling guys, mm -hmm. but the strikers always uh, look kind of alien in a good yeah. way. Yeah. And so here, we're going to have a rare time that Volkan is working underneath as a baby face. Yes, he is working as a baby face. Um, so the way that I would describe Dick... <sighs> is that he kind of looks like a goon from Streets of Rage. Yeah, uh, I see it. Or a Ninja Turtle without its shell. Mm-hmm. Um, or any is... of the villains that the Ninja Turtles faced. Yes. Uh, he kind of looks like that dude that had Krang in his stomach as well. Mm -hmm. uh, he is just an evil... He, if you tried to... If you... He's like a Bloodsport character. Yes. I'm gonna stop making a physical description, but he looks like a Bloodsport character. If you like distilled the idea of a Dutch kickboxer, you'd mm -hmm. you'd get that guy. Um, and we are going to start describing this match. So, Volkan is staring down with his trademark bored face at a dude who looks like he's about to start eating the ring. And Volkan uh, is. Volkan, so Volkan's build height and weight is clearly fake, um, because it says he's six foot three, two hundred thirty-five. He's That's... he's tall, mm -hmm. and he is large, but I, you know, Fedor he's... is Fedor is six foot two thirty, so he is not no he is not absolutely. Fedor's size. He's clearly a lanky gentleman. Dick, uh, really is like. At least as big as he's uh, as Volkan is actually built at, and he is scary looking. He's a big dude, um, and he definitely has a good mind for being a big dude who is a bad dude. Mm -hmm. um, but at the start of this match, uh, it's actually not him being disrespectful; it's Volkan uh, disrespectful. Ooh. He does shake his hand initially but Volkan goes for a second handshake but fakes it out and starts and knocks Dick onto the ground uh, and begins doing some mat work and just uh, immediately tries to go for a leg lock yep uh, but they manage to stand him up I believe Dick goes for a, uh, a rope break uh, yes and for those uh, not in the know about rings, um, they have a point system, not unlike UWFI, just a little bit more, like, fleshed out, I guess. Um, mm -hmm. But you get a certain amount of knockdowns or rope breaks uh, per match, and you, it'll be helpfully displayed in a nice little graphic uh, how many you've burned. I'm not going to lie, I still don't understand how it works. None like, of us do, we're all just pretending it. It's like the, the colors pop up on screen, you're like, ah, oh, yes. Ah, He's this losing. is bad. I I see yellow... Occasionally, they'll have, like, a long line of points, and then sometimes they'll have knockdown, and then, like, on top rope break, I believe. It's like you get minor infractions, and then there's heavy infractions. Yeah, the knockdown it, is more than the rope break. Yes. Is how it comes off, at least to me. Um, that is that is how it works. Okay. 
So after getting stood up, uh, Dick immediately shows off that he is the big dog when it comes to striking as he kicks the shit out of Han, leading him to do his classic knockout spot, which is where Han will flail his arms at the ref saying that he's okay. And it it is hilarious. You were talking about um, how Charles Oliveira gets his shit rocked. And mm-hmm. then, like, just sort of, like, sits back up, like, then nah, nah, I'm good. And he has yeah. a very similar aura here. It very much does. Uh, it depends sometimes, because he will just shoot directly back up after getting his head kicked off. Mm-hmm. Uh, where he will, like, start doing cartoon begging to the ref to not call off the match, even if he was never going to do that in the first place. Yeah. And Volk... Okay, selling is a, a weird word when it comes to this, um, because with aside from some of the head kicks, um, he's actually just getting kicked in the leg or body here. Like these are shoot kicks. He is getting um, the shit kicked out of him. But it's so it, because of that, it's less about selling an individual like body part and being like, "Oh, I'm in pain." It's more about like the psychology of how he reacts with the pain here. But mm-hmm. it is still genius. Yes. Uh, typically he'll, like, shake his leg or do... Shoot selling is very different from typical pro wrestling selling, where it's very much a lot more subtle. And also, no selling, in this case, is more impressive than actually selling. Yes. Um, because that's a real pain you're fighting through. Mm Mm-hmm. Absolutely. The just... Absolute tree trunk kicks from Dick. Uh, while Volk is trying to keep Dick on the ground, uh, he hits him with a nasty kick, uh, but he still manages to get taken down by Volk, which leads to uh, what I can only describe as wash dog grappling on his part, mm-hmm. where he just kind of flails around and tries to go for a guillotine. Or, uh, yeah, not guillotine, uh, uh, rear naked choke. It's very much like UFC 1 yeah. uh, sort of fighting when they had one of the pure strikers in there, which they didn't really understand is that you just can't avoid the clinch, um, mm. no matter how much you want to. And, and it sort of reminds me of, uh, in his very early uh, Pancrase fights, Boz Rutten, whenever someone starts to take him down, literally all he does is grab a guillotine, um, but not like a good one. He just sort of grabs a headlock and just like lays on the ground and tries to can... do a rest hold in yes, the middle of a shoot match. He just holds their neck until he can like butt scoot his way to the ropes. That's and so that's, funny. That's the only thing he knows how to do. Um, and you know, this is the same gym. Um, so that comparison that would make sense happen. that his grappling is shitty dog ass. Mm-hmm. Um, and. Volk takes advantage of his dog grappling by uh, going in for a leg lock. Uh, But they manage to stand back up, and Dick uh, begins to, uh, like, I think he's trying to go for an armbar or something different. No, excuse me. He has, uh, Volk has the leg lock cinched in, and then he does a new definition to kicking out, which is slamming your heel into Volk's face repeatedly, trying to get him to stop. Uh, it's very, very brutish. I very much enjoy that about Mr. Uh, that he just starts absolutely gorilla grappling out. Well, it, it very much is... Th- there's some truth to it, right? When, um, if you think about the idea of the logic of a quote-unquote real fight, if you mm-hmm. look at thing or something and then you're like well logically if you're going to get that low i could just take you down or in this case if you look at like ju- a jujitsu position and then you think well you know in a real fight i could just you know i could just punch him jujitsu isn't real just punch that's sort of where he's coming from here mm-hmm. sambo isn't real just punch yeah for sure just trying his best to Derek lewis's way out of it and he does come off like the fucking terminator Oh yeah, he is still scary no matter what position he's in. Even if it is getting 
absolutely manhandled by Volkan, but that's aside from the point. And Volkan is a gremlin when it comes to his leg locks. He's mm-hmm. so fucking fluid with it. Um, he... Ryo Bajing, Neo, uh, toe holds, but his favorite's the knee bar. But So if the knee bar doesn't work, he'll grab a toe hold or something um, and go to like a heel hook if he can. But mostly he's going for the knee bar. For sure. Um, and then he try Volkan tries to tear open Dick's arm by isolating it with an arm bar, uh, but he manages to get a rope break in time. Uh, throughout this whole match, there's sort of a air of confidence, I find, with Han. It's a quiet confidence. It is a very quiet confidence, but he is willing to swing with, uh, Mr. Dick. Uh, he is very bold in the middle part of this match, uh, even though he knows that, uh, Mr. Hood can, like, knock his head off at any moment Mm -hmm. with his kicks. Uh, and eventually, most of the time in this match, Volk is only striking to get close for a clinch. Uh, but they manage to clinch up, but... Uh, Dick gets a little low, and, uh, he is kind of allergic to using knees in this match, it seems like. Uh, apparent, like, nobody told him he could use his knees. Or maybe he can't use his knees. I don't know the rules of ring, quite honestly. You can do basically anything in, in ring. Except for ground and pound, it seems. Because that's yeah, dishonorable. That, that, yeah, because in a lot of these, because, like, in Pancrase, a similar thing, you could... Do it. It just there was a gentleman's agreement that I guess sure. that just wasn't cool. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Uh, but in the corner and like in the clinch, he does like almost a knee. Weirdly enough, like he'll throw these uh kicks that are basically just connecting with the knee. So most of the kick is just all of the energy is going nowhere. And it's just these light knee hits, which is kind of funny. Uh, but Volk manages to ground him again. Uh, but Dick manages to rope break once again. Uh, which leads to Dick having a shit-eating grin once he does a rope break. Uh, as if that's something to be proud of. Yeah. Which is very funny. He's very much the most heel I've seen a shoot, like, fighter get. Yes, very much so. Um, and then he actually does hit a knee uh, into the gut of Han, leading to a knockdown. But Han is chilling and gets right back up, as if nothing ever happened. And then... Dick is brawling around until he lands flush on Han's chin. Uh, just com- that actually does almost knock him da- knock him out. And, uh, and, but in Han real life is as well, huh? As in real life as well, that is no a, for sure. That is a, a snug fucking strike. It is very snug. Um, but Han does the Charles Oliveira where he lands on his back, uh, and begins doing a Noki versus Ali style kicks to the legs, and just starts butt scooting towards him. Uh, which Dick seems to have basically the same reaction as Ali and just kind of scoot away towards the ropes in fear. Unfortunately, unfortunately he didn't do uh, what Ali did that really makes me happy is when uh, Ali started climbing up the, like, up to the <laughs> turnbuckle to try to, like, stomp Anoki. That's, that's, pr- that match is curious. I, I need to watch it someday. I mean, you don't. But I mean, I don't, but I do. One of the funniest do. things ever. But I do. Because it's two guys who don't know what the rules are. It's the same as watching uh, Inoki versus Saito on Inoki Death Mountain. Or yes. whatever. Yes, uh, when they did the, uh, the two billion hour uh, death match across an island. Which honestly sounds like walkcore if you think about it. Yeah, it's just that it's like shot like a nature documentary uh and which deeply is confusing it's it's borderline experimental yeah it's art i don't know if it's good art but it's art 
All right, then they continue to strike about a little bit, and then, uh, as any strike exchange involving Dick Hood, uh, he manages to rock Han once again, uh, still establishing his superiority, I guess you could say. We'll go uh, with that. Yeah. Uh, with the standing game. Uh, then, you kind of, okay, this is a crazy thing to be bringing up in a video about a shoot, shooty mm -hmm. promotion, but this match kind of reminds me of Roman Reigns versus John Cena. Elaborate. Uh, okay. So, during that match, they, John Cena's whole shtick during that match is that he, if he gets one good roll-up, he can... Uh, yes, yes. Uh, it's... You're specifically it, talking about SummerSlam 2021. Yes. Um, and, uh, excuse me. Uh, the equivalent of that in this match is that Volkan just needs one good submission and he just completely has got just bags up and packs and smokes dick hood. Which is also just true. It, it is very true. Uh, but. I think that it's kind of a fun little story and mm -hmm. to add in there. You did also forget in the striking exchange, uh, Vulcan deploys his devastating weapon, which is the spinning back fist. Uh, that looks the, as silly as you'd expect it to. I, I like to call it the, the spinning back chop to the future. Yes. Shouts out, Eddie. But um, it's, it's very much... I don't know why this is a universal thing. Like, uh, Chael Sonnen, uh, in the second fight with Anderson Silva, he tried to do a spinning back fist and then got uh, knocked out. And then Ben Askren, <laughs> in his final fight versus uh, Damian Maya, um, tried to do a spinning back fist and then got knocked out. I think it's just people who don't train striking think it's cool and they try it. Um, which it objectively I'm sure is. He, I'm sure... He, doing combat sambo he had some level of striking training but not enough and so it looks hilarious he looks like he's falling down every time mm -hmm. he looks like he's about to slip on a banana peel it's ridiculous and then after uh vulcan banana flips his way through uh volk tries to get an arm bar in but Dick has the sense to do the S grip mm -hmm. to prevent it. Uh and then uh he managed they managed to get stood up. I believe uh the ref gets bored, so he tells them to get up. I yeah. uh and then Dick hits a mean head kick to the head, but Vulcan gets up almost immediately. This man is no selling all of Dick's no selling, quote unquote. Uh, yeah, which once again is just actually like trying to walk off a real concussion. And he's he's God bless him, he's doing great. Mm-hmm. Uh and then Han plays possum a little bit. Uh where he kind of gives uh Dick more confidence on the mat. Where he'll like concede these terrible, terrible rear nakeds from uh Dick. And then getting out of them, and then repeating the process like two times, and then He's baiting him. He is baiting him. Uh, and then once he, once Dick gets too comfortable, he manages to wrap him up in a leg lock, and uh, he pretzels him up, and they tap out to the STF. To the STF. Yeah. S uh, I mean, it is an STF. It is an STF. He does hit the similar position. And, uh, yeah, this is an excellent, fun little match. I very much enjoyed it. It's a uh, classic striker versus a grappler matchup. He said... <laughs> he said the Time line. is a flat circle. It, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, uh, pardon me if I sound like a robot. Any other uh, I, closing thoughts on this one? Um... Yeah, I very much enjoyed it. It was a uh, fun little story being told. I liked the almost, I, I wouldn't say David versus Goliath scenario, but more imposing striker versus 
confident, quote unquote, uh, quiet, confident uh, submission guy who's kind of just going through the motions with this oaf. Yeah, G- Goliath versus like Gollum, like a like a weird, a weird, like a weird little guy, some, a weird little guy that uh, manages to tap out Goliath. And Vulcan isn't little, but you know, in comparison, in yeah, for sure, really. for sure. What is our next match? So the next one, uh, we we did the Tamara one next, right? We did do the Tamara yes. one next. So sorry, this is the uh, culmination of the trilogy between Kyoshi, Tamara, and Vulcan. Um, these series of matches are basically the most acclaimed um, matches that come out of rings. Mm-hmm. And this is, like I said, the culmination. It's when, t- spoiler alert, Tamara is finally going to go over on Vulcan after he's been submitted in their previous two outings. Um, mm. And this does feel like the big time. It, this is a good, this is some good shit. I'll spoil it ahead of time. This is, mm-hmm. mm, this is primo. Delicious shit. Um, so, we begin with a feeling out process where it kind of shows the personality of each guy. Uh, Vulcan is much more firm to the ground. Uh, he's not bouncing as much. Mm-hmm. Uh, where Tamura is more bouncy and is like a little bit more fiery, I would say. He's throwing his leg kicks. Yep, he is throwing some fierce leg kicks. Uh, of, which, but... of course, I assume he picked up from his... Uh... From his uh, teacher, uh, MMA legend Nobuhiko Takada. Dude, that guy has such fierce striking ability. Oh, yeah. He's so fucking good. Mm-hmm. I heard he beat uh, Mark Coleman. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, d- did you see that fight? It was intense. I don't yeah. even know how, like, I don't even know how Mark Coleman's still alive. It's wild. Anyways, uh, it was a, f- then that exchange leads to a fierce arm drag from uh Vulcan arm pulling it like a death. joystick. Arm drag of death uh from Vulcan sends Tamara straight to the mat. Vulcan manages to wrench in an arm bar on Tamara near immediately uh to the first rope break. Which is also just a bit of a fuck you because the, the arm bar is very much Tamara's um, thing. For sure. He is it, going for uh, it the entire match. As Which, uh, Taz would call it, the uh, Juji Gatame, you know. You gotta lock in the Juji Gatame. Yeah, yeah. Which is, um, it, when anybody else uses, Even like, the judo boy. name for a submission, they sound like a douchebag. Um, but because Taz it's fucking Taz, bro, bro. Long Island, uh, it's perfect. Just call the match, dude. Yeah. I swear. Uh, and then Volcon manages to wrench an arm bar. Uh, I just said that. Honest to God, no idea. Oh God, that I have also mentioned the ring scoring system. My my kingdom, it's falling apart. <laughs> uh, it's a it's a. I like it. I I I I say it makes no sense, but I do like the uh sportier presentation. It adds to the kayfabe. Yes, it does. Uh, and then Vulcan manages to meander meander his way over to Tamora. Uh, Vulcan taunts Tamura by bouncing around uh, to make the leg kicks both look weak and to mimic him at the start of the match. Mm-hmm. Which is just lovely. It's a good, it's a good fuck you. Big fan. Uh, and then Vulcan attempts to bring this match back to the mat, but backfires, allowing Tamura to get the back. Uh, Vulcan manages to prevent an immediate armbar by... It but fails, leading to Tamura to wrench at Volk ar- Volk's arm. Volk manages to do th- to then roly-poly over to the ropes for a break. It's one of the few times that Volkan seems genuinely, uh, like, worried on the mat. Because, uh, obviously, he was just kind of, for shits and giggles, uh, allowing uh, Dick Vrrr to uh like try to submit him and also in in the next two uh matches who are against guys who are solid grapplers but he does not seem like he's in danger like he is i would argue that in the on our final penultimate match uh he is selling for his life but we'll get there um and then 
let's see here. I'm good at doing presentations. Uh, and then Tamora begins kicking the shit out of Volk once again, once they get stood up. Uh, but it backfires, leading to a shoot dragon screw to a leg lock, question mark. Uh, I don't, yes. I'm not going to pretend like I know what submissions are. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's, a, it's a dragon screw into a uh, knee bar. There you go. Uh, when the leg lock knee bar doesn't mm-hmm. work, Vulcan sneaks his way over to uh, Kimura. This... Uh, oh, excuse me. Uh, he sneaks his way over to get in a Kimura. Uh, this yes. Kimura shreds the hell out of Tamura's arm. That will never get confusing. Uh, but he continues to fight out uh, it looks bit. so genuinely ba- painful. Oh, it looks like it sucks. Christ. Uh, he sells the pain great as well. I'm sure it is actually painful. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he... Because uh, he's after... cranking it, he's just not stepping over to finish it. Yeah. You know, because you wouldn't. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he sells the pain by shaking the Kimura arm. Mm-hmm. And then they roll their way over to the ropes again, leading to a break by the ref. Due to inactivity, they kind of just stare at each other for a little bit. Uh, And then they get stood up. And once they get up, uh, Tamara has... get up. Oh, get up. Uh, They kind of, like, uh, get on their knees a little bit and stare at each other. And once Tamara gets, gets fired up, man... The this is this is babyface fire right here. This is some good shit. This is the equivalent to like Kenta Kobashi going crazy, mm-hmm. but in a shoot context, yeah. shootier context. Um, they look at each other with killer intent, only for Tamura to crack Han right in the ribs with a nasty kick to the body. The kicks yeah, continue. He, oh, he just starts. You? Sorry, he just starts throwing him uh, in just an insane pace. Uh, which both cl- her- clearly like hurts both of them, and mm-hmm. Han does try to shrug it, like, "Nah, that this isn't hurting me." There's so much good, just like, like uh, heel selling, I guess you could put it, of trying to shrug it off as hard as possible. It's so good. It sort of reminds me when, like, uh, this is giving a strange comparison stylistically, but it reminds me of, like, when uh, Kenny Omega is making a comeback when he's a babyface. Mm. Um, because he's going to start throwing crazy knee strikes. Yes. Uh, it's a very similar kind of vibe. Yeah, I, I know what you get. I know what you're getting at. Uh, but these kicks only last for so long as Han, as Han manages to get into a clinch, leading to the match returning to the mat. Almost right away, Han gets a toehold. Presumably that's what that is. Uh, but Tamura gets the back off of Han to set up for yet another armbar, but the attempt is countered. Uh, and this is the moment where I kind of realize that there's no ground and pound in rings. Mm-hmm. Uh, there are so many moments where they're just staring at each other down while they're moving around to different positions. This looks pretty badass. It's, it's pretty... It's sick. But also, I, I I am a very casual fan of, like, UFC and, obviously, Pride. I'm a freak. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, I've seen, I've seen some things, and it feels jarring to see two dudes just stare each other down and then go for submissions. Yes, well, it'd be deeply rude to... Uh, oh, sorry. Remember. Okay, it's Ring of Honor S. Anyways, um, Code of Honor. The, yeah, because technically in this, you're not supposed to hit with an open palm. Uh, or you're, you're supposed to not hit, hit with a closed palm. Mm-hmm. You could if you were a heel, and maybe yeah. the referee will tell you to open it if you want. Uh, you're not supposed to hit them. You can't jump on them after they've, uh, they've been knocked to the ground. Like It's like boxing. You have to let them up. So yeah. if you're going to follow them to the ground, it has to be to submit them, you know? Mm-hmm. For sure. Then, uh, I don't know what this is exactly. I've kind of described it as a spin a uh, which very much is not the technical term. It is not Booker T spinning on his back, uh, for the record. Or, in, or Infinito uh, doing his infinite spin. Yeah. Um, it is... Uh, 
Uh, okay. This is this is gonna be a good description. All right. Mm -hmm. So you grab the dude's arm, right? And yes. then you kind of like spin around a little bit, uh, kind of like you're doing a gator roll, uh, mm -hmm. but not really because that's an actual term. Yeah. Uh, and then you like uh, angle angle them in a way uh, where it's kind of uppy style. Uh, Volky wants uppies style. Uh, yeah. And then it, it it hurts their shoulder. Presumably. Yeah. Yes, um, what he's doing is probably a fancy thing with a Japanese name in judo, but for all intents and purposes, uh, in a pro wrestling context, it might as well just be an arm ringer or something, like he's just ah with your shoulder. Okay, got it. Yeah. It, it doesn't look good, but it's it's tearing up my poor boy, uh, Tamara. Sure, with his already hurt uh, arm. It's, it's so sad. Uh, which leads to yet another rope break. By the way, I pulled up uh, I pulled up Rings. Someone archived Rings website from 1998. Ooh. Um, and uh, if you look at the English translation of their rule set, um, their thing about no um, uh, close fisted strikes to the head is wonderfully rendered as fisting on the face is prohibited. <laughs> oh hell yeah! We've got fisting. We've got dicks. Mm -hmm. This is a cool episode. Yeah. Anyways, um, then after the spin a Rooney, uh, Han uses the spinning back chop to the future, closing the distance for another clinch, which sets up Han's very unique uh, wrist clutch suplex, which is beautiful. It's really cool, and it looks like it sucks to take. Um. What he does is that he hits a suplex, but he's only using, like, the arm to, like... It's kind of like, uh... Dude, I don't know what it's called in well, uh, he's, judo. He's um, forcing you to, to front bump, is what he's doing. Yeah, for sure. Or else your arm actually breaks. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Like, he's uh, twisting it in a way that if you don't, like, jump and take the bump, you know... You're gonna, you're trying to, uh, like, it's both, he's, it's a two things are going on where he is, like, trying to throw you to the ground, but also you have to untwist your arm. Mm -hmm. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Well, it looks like it sucks. It looks like a super finisher for shoot shit. Mm hmm. Uh, but it is a, it just takes him to the ground. Uh, Tamura holds on for dear life for his S grip. Uh, to prevent the arm bar. This manages to break up, uh, which leads to Tamura almost locking in a knee bar, which freaks the fuck out of Han to That's get my his thing. first rope break. That is my thing. What? Volcan. Knee bar? Yeah, knee bar. Oh, sorry, I meant leg lock. Yeah. Uh, anyways. Uh, a nasty front kick from Tamura then sends... Sets up a nasty head kick, which damn near knocks out Han. Uh, this Beautiful. leads Han getting up immediately to see it, to say he's fine in a sheer panic state. The first time he actually looks nervous. Oh yeah, he is clearly in denial. Mm -hmm. uh, but Han quickly recovers and grounds the match yet again, leading to a sleep. To a did I call it a sleeper? What the hell is wrong with me? A rear naked choke from Han. Uh, no, it's somewhere between a when someone is putting them in the sleeper hold, and it's like sleeper. you know, it's a scuffed rear naked choke. That's what yeah. they do in pro wrestling. Uh, this gets broken up, uh, leading to a tense battle of grappling minds, presumably, which leads to almost an armbar, but they get out of it. Tamura both. Pops, uh, Tamura both, oh, what the hell am I talking about? Tamura pops out of it, crouched at one, oh, they both pop out of it, crouched at one another, staring each other down. Fierce leg kicks of Tamura begin to deal serious damage to Han, as he damn near crumbles to the mat in pain. But he manages to get back up, hit a stance of someone who just took a math quiz in high school, then hits a half stuka taunt to ensure he still is 
in this to the ref. I'm feeling great. I'm feeling they. You have to do like this kind of like boxing, like Stockton, like Nate Diaz stance at the mm-hmm. ref in order to ensure that you are okay. Yeah. Well, you know, in boxing, it's that you got to put your hands up is how you mm-hmm. signify that you're ready to go again. For sure. And then... But it's not long until Tamura eyes Volk up to kick him square in the chest, knocking all of the wind out of Han's sails. It looks fucking great, by the way. He clearly put all of the power into that kick. It looked like it sucked so hard. I, 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 it looked like he just broke his rib cage in every place possible. Uh, I note here that this match rocks, and I have to agree with past me. Yeah. Uh, Tamura damn near snaps Han's neck when he tries to get to the mat, leading to yet another rope break. Uh, Volkan locks in a very nasty arm bar, shredding up poor Tamura's arm. No! Uh, and then, uh, the equivalent of a King's Road bomb fest begins as Tamura and Han trade submissions, with Han first hitting the twist rooney the technical term for that move, uh, and then Tamura locks in an armbar. They stand back up for, uh, for Han to piece up Tamura, knocking him almost the fuck out, then hitting the I'm Jesus pose, uh, Jack Perry-esque. Uh, I think he's a big... Uh, Jack Perry was heavily inspired by Vulcan to do pro clearly, wrestling. Clearly, Um Tamura then gets back up. Uh, the striking continues only for Han to go for the clinch one last time until it backfires completely. In the center of the ring sits Tamura, locking in the armbar. With nowhere to run, Han taps out, ending the match. Holy shit, this match rocks. Tamura and uh, Volkan do not miss. It's a true epic, and in like twelve minutes, it's yeah, it's it's good shit. It's like I watched a uh, more grounded King's Road match in like ten minutes. And if the instead of head trauma, it was your shoulder and your it's elbow shoulder being trauma. Hyper. Yeah, your your joints being hyperextended. Yeah, Spinaroonie drama. Any That's, other thoughts on this match? No, I was just about to say Dustin Rhodes has spin a Rooney trauma, but that's a different story. That's a different thing. Um, but yeah, this was a great match. I out of all the matches I saw, I recommend this one the most. Sorry to spoil ahead of time, but <laughs> this is this is the good shit. Excuse me. Drinking water. Mm-hmm. Cause this job is hard. Sitting behind this microphone. Hard work. You, you people. Or make me fucking sick. I work no effort. I work with fucking slop. children. You 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 grovel at my feet. Cows. Oh, let's get my grovel. mom. Love you, mom. What? Do cows grovel? Um they have knees, don't they? Unclear. Um We're gonna do some cow based yeah, research. Can- can we do? Can we look up? Uh, Jamie, pull up a picture of a cow. Um, do cows have knees? This is this is what the people think of. Cows when they do think not of, have knees. They don't have knees. They have a joint called the stifle joint. Uh, so they got stifles. That's how they crouch down. So that was the uh, your cow fact for today. Um, so that's why but, you subscribe to the Wrestling with the Narrative channel, is that you want uh, sweet cow facts that make the, you squee. The next match is against one uh, Suyoshi Kosaka. Oh, um, yeah. Who is actually rather infamous in MMA. Do you know why? I don't. Okay, so uh, he has a win over Fedor Emelianenko. What? Exactly. So he was facing Fedor in the Ring King of Kings 2000 tournament. Uh, Kosaka hit him with an illegal elbow, which opened up a cut, and it was a doctor stoppage. But instead of a no stoppage, instead of a no contest, they ruled it a knockout win for Kosaka, even though it was uh, an illegal strike. 
That's fucking bullshit. Yeah, Holy which I can only describe fuck. as uh, promotional rat fuckery. Is the that is rat fuckery. And it's mostly because it's a tournament. Um, so they needed someone to advance so it couldn't be a no contest. And yeah. if they had Fedor win by DQ, then that would mean that um, Fedor would advance, except Fedor can't continue because he has a cut. Um, so... Hmm. Like I said, rap fuckery, but technically Kosaka is probably most known for MMA fans for that. Um, but uh, he's also a truly good uh, pro wrestler. That No, he definitely is. Uh, he is a very, very... Uh, mean, I, I guess the word is meaningful, I'm looking for. Uh, everything he does is very... Uh, he feels like he's putting his whole self into everything he does, which I appreciate. His, his nickname was Kakutogi Kai no Kenja, which means the sage of the combat sports world. What the fuck does that even mean? It means he's all serious. Oh, he does have the expression of a dude who's shitting his pants. Yes, yes, he does. Um, he kind of, he looks like a cartoon rendering of... Like, Yuki Ishikawa. Yeah. Hey, we brought up Bachi Bachi on our Bachi Bachi show. He does, but he does look permanently stuck in, like, just, like, anger. Which Yuki Ishikawa kind of has. Yeah. Like a younger version of him, I guess I should say. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's start talking about this match. Uh... In stark contrast with our dick match, uh, this match is much more respectful. It's very sporty. Very sporty. Well, yeah, because assumably uh, Kosaka would take it, would think you were actually disrespecting him if you were trying to play heel and then try to kill you. He would then throw an illegal elbow and you'd, he'd win. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, the boys begin twisting each other around, uh, pretzel style. Uh, Han begins hitting his trademark tree trunk kicks and slaps, uh, which lead to nothing but a takedown attempt from Yoshi. Uh, Yoshi, uh, does a lot of takedowns in this match, uh, that look like he should be absolutely Ben Askren to hell. Very much. Uh, and back. Uh, where is... <sighs> Who was it that knocked my memory? Ben Askren down? Yeah. Well, uh, With his flying knee. Oh, yeah, Jorge Masvidal. Jorge Masvidal! I knew that name. Uh, anyways, I was just testing you. We would later use that flying knee on Chris Jericho. Uh, real and true, brother. It actually happened. Yeah, it did. Uh, on episode of Dynamite. It did. Uh, and then... Uh, Yoshi is very desperate in every exchange, which is very nice, uh, especially how, right off the bat. Is that how we're shortening his name? He's Yoshi? Yeah, he's Yoshi. Okay. I, I, I can I'll, that. I'll be fucked before I do ev anything like, I could do Sue. That's or not bad. Say, or to say Kosaka. Kosaka's a mouthful. I was struggling with Tamura a little bit, and he's not even that hard. Sometimes it gets difficult, you know? I I have you're an impediment. Unabashed, your unabashed racism to the Japanese. I love the Japanese. Mm -hmm. They're great. Half of my media is from them. Thanks, Japan. Thanks to Japan. We love you. Mm -hmm. Uh, stop hating Brazil. Maybe. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's anyways, kind of fun. it's a little fun. Yeah, it's a it's a fun rivalry. Yeah. But, aside from Japan and Brazil having a rivalry, uh, expert evasion leads to Yoshi being able to win out the exchange with a wrenching armbar uh, to a rope break. Uh, and then, an attempted neck breaking is escaped by Han, who manages to wiggle his way to almost a Kimura. Uh, then, a rope break from Yoshi manages to bring it back to standing. Uh, a big kick to the ribs leads to what looks like an octopus stretch, but gets thwarted by an actual submission from Han. 
I do deeply enjoy how everybody, because Han is a weird gangly boy, uh, mm-hmm. all of his opponents just attempt to uh, like kick the shit out of him, which is what yeah. you would do. Absolutely. I mean, when you have a submission monkey like him, you kind of have to. Try to pummel him. Yeah. Uh, but that never seems to work out, does it? No. He always manages to spinning backfist his way into a clinch. Uh, and then, uh, yet another twist a uh, leading to a rope break from Yoshi. Yoshi is constantly keeping this match on the ground, knowing his striking isn't up to Han's par, which isn't a high bar. Yeah, which is sad. Uh, but he is constantly trying to, he is shoving his whole head into Han's balls most of this match. He also is doing, like, some shit you don't normally see in a rings context, uh, because he loves the figure four leg lock, um, and it's kind of jarring. Yeah. A uh, famous shoot submission. Uh, of which, of course, though, Volkan does sell the correct leg. Which, you you gotta applaud a worker, you know? He gets it. Jack Oman would be proud. It's probably Jake. just because he's, he's actually, like, cranking it to some extent. So oh, yeah. It fucking sucks. Uh, and then, Yoshi locks in an armbar attempt, but Han holds strong. Uh, but it gets broken. In an instant, Yoshi goes for another armbar, but Han manages to get a hold of the legs and starts working a nasty leg lock. Uh, Han is determined to break Yoshi's leg with his Russian pretzel tech. Yep, that's accu- That's a good way to describe it. Uh, a fun sequence that leads to Yoshi and Han, Han uh, fighting for dominance on who can rip each other's foot off first. Yes, uh, it's, oh, a fun, yeah. it's a very fun sequence. The Big toe fan. hold, the toe hold, especially in a um, in a shoot, is like kind of tricky because it's a it's a pain tolerance thing. Unless you have the brute strength to actually be able to break their ankle, it's basically just like whether you can convince them to tap. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's just a great petty move of them both grabbing a toe hold. It's a fun sequence. Big fan. But realistically, neither of these psychos are going to tap to that. Oh, of course not. They go with the coal miners technique mm-hmm. of just breaking your arm or foot or whatever. Um, and who then... has more? Who has more good ideas about uh, health and well-being than coal miners? It works out for the canary, doesn't it? Uh, no, I don't think so. What? Listen, mm-hmm. as a guy who's been to the Chicago Museum of Art of Science and Industry. Been there said it twice. right the first time. Uh, I have been in a simulated coal mine, and I know that animatronic canary is alive. <laughs> Still. So every canary must have been fine. By I know what I saw, goddammit. I, I was there, in the trenches, in the, in the coal mine. Aside from the point. Mm-hmm. Anyhow. This is the first time, by the way, that anyone's tried to, like, leg lock with Vulcan um, to any, well, like, well, to any, like, uh, concerted extent, you know what I mean? Right, yeah. I mean, like, you're not gonna go up against the dude who is constantly tapping people out to leg-based submissions. Right? But Osaka is just weird enough to really want to try his luck. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, Yoshi doesn't understand how rear naked chokes work and goes for a sleeper. Uh, but Han is scared somehow and rope breaks. Han then masterfully wraps himself around Yoshi's arm and gets another arm bar attempt. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then Han does an Inoki and begins his famous beat the shit out of dog rush, which I go on to coin as the Volk Rush. I like that. Uh, and then Yoshi manages to snake Han's leg, but it leads to his downfall as Han manages to lock in an impromptu armbar. In classic Han fashion, he says thanks for his win uh, <laughs> from the impromptu armbar, and then rolls and leaves to the uh, elated fans. Uh, it's really interesting. It's sort of, whereas we see in the other ones, 
they try to they try to like Tamara has his arm bars. Um, Dick Vry has his striking, mm-hmm. um, but Kosaka truly thought he could leg lock and uh, fuck around and found out with Vulcan. Um, and it's like, you know, within the narrative, it's said that he's almost as good as Vulcan, but, almost. you know, you'd be kind of a dumbass to try to um, go for versus him in his strongest area. Right. Seems a bit, you know, mm-hmm. counterproductive. And then like, Kosaka would would go on to do nothing of controversy after this. After this, I'm I'm proud of him. You know, mm-hmm. it's it's hard in this business to be, uh, you know, uncontroversial. Uh, similar to our next character, we're going to talk about uh, unproblematic hero Akira Maeda. The founder of rings, the owner of wearing rings, the uh, <laughs> the thrower of the dick heard around the world, uh, just just beats the shit out of balls. The guy who is somehow the most unlikable guy in a promotion that included Nobuhiko Takada. Uh, we have Akira Maeda. I I've, I'm sick of this. I. I do not. I'm going to be honest. I am a straight up Akira Maeda hater. I do not like this gentleman. So he he's, is deeply talented. He's incredibly he, talented. He's talented, but he's he's just a jackass yeah, for no, most he, of it. I so feel like... I, as you pointed out, Takata eventually learned how to laugh at himself, uh, yeah. whereas uh, Kira Maeda never did, including an MMA fight he took versus uh, Alexander Karelin. Uh, oh, no. Where, I'm sure nothing bad happened there. Well, it's a work on one side, if that makes any sense, where Maeda is truly trying to fight Karelin. But mm. Karelin is a good boy, and even though he weighs like 100 pounds more, he just sort of like tosses Maeda around and pretends like he doesn't know how to finish him. It's kind of like wrestling your little cousin. Yeah. He's like, whoop. whoop. Uh, uh. He, does, he does a suplex every once in a while because he feels like he has to. And then just sort of like, transitions between various amateur wrestling positions but never really trying to submit him which is like i understand For sure. he isn't trained to submit people but if he just started squeezing akira maeda's neck he would die literally uh i feel like <laughs> akira maeda is what cm punk might end up historically oh yeah um i don't like akira maeda but like i can see like in a generation or two uh, them being like, I don't like CM Punk, that guy was a dick. But I love yeah. CM Punk. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. same with the, presumably, the Japanese people, uh, how they love Akira Maeda. He think, he's a cool badass bad boy. I will also point out that he is billed as, um, as, uh, 6'4", 253 be pounds. Kidding me. 253 pounds, which is 20 pounds more than uh than Vulcan is built at. And Maeda is lanky. Um but 64? He's not fucking 64. He's not the Undertaker. Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? Get oh. out of here, bro. In Japan they had never seen anybody 64. Uh, aside from the one time they got Andre the Giant over there in New Japan. So, if you just s- said it, they took your word for it, evidently. The fuck? You can't be serious. Build heights are bullshit. Conor it's McGregor just... is my height. Yeah. And I'll fight him for it. Exactly. <laughs> the height is 5'11". This is all deeply silly. This is ridiculous. Um... But so yeah, I have kind of a controversial theory. king. Uh, I have kind of a theory about Akira Maeda. Well, well, we'll get to the match. Uh, mm-hmm. but I, f- I have a feeling that whenever you have, when you ever you get over with a Maeda, uh, it's kind of like wrestling a moody teenager. Mm-hmm. They're always kind of lacklusterly going through the spots, not in yeah. like a sandbagging, sandbagging way, but in a kind of I'm going to throw in a bunch of uh. Uh, like stiff shots because I'm angry at you. Mm-hmm. Uh, definitely not in a Vader stiff way, where it's just yeah. like he, you get in what you put out, just kind of a dickish way. 
Yeah, Maeda definitely takes some ahem liberties. Um, <laughs> uh, he's never known for doing those. By the way, I just uh, I pulled up to make sure I wasn't going crazy. Um, I pulled up a match of uh, Sayama versus Maeda. Um, and they appear to be roughly the same height, and Sayama is 5'11". So. Sayama is 5'11"? He's billed at 5'11". Oh! Excuse me. He's Conor McGregor 5'11". Got it. Yeah, so he's 5'8". Yeah, he's, he's me. I, mm-hmm. I was going to say, Sayama is, must have gotten those bone extension surgeries, because, Jesus Christ, he's as tall as Fujiwara. And I don't think Fujiwara is very tall. He By the way, Conor McGregor tall. is officially billed at 5'8", or he was at a certain point, and then they started slowly sliding the height up, which is deeply I, silly. I can't wait for him to be Sagnum Singh's height. Yeah. That's gonna like be when he made it, At least when he made his featherweight debut, he was billed at 5'8", and then slowly got taller. <laughs> so, so silly. Um, all you right. know how guys in their 20s keep growing. Uh, exactly. I mean... I hope to, uh, when I hit 28, that I become six foot eight. Yep. So match up with my height or my age and height. My height is like six foot right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, anyways, uh, we're going to start talking about this match because that's what you came for, loyal audience. This match is uncooperative. It's really uncooperative. Like, um, there's a peep. Maeda is taking liberties in this match. We'll get to it, but he is taking some liberties. Uh, we start off with Maeda kicking the shit out of Han's legs, but then gets met with the spinning back chop to the future, which leads to a beating in the corner. Uh, I will know by the way that in Vulcan's debut, uh, a year prior to this, he had faced, um, he had faced Maeda. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so this is sort of him trying to show how he's grown since then. Mm-hmm. Uh, Maeda is, sees himself as a badass striker of the match, uh, so yeah. he spams leg kicks as much as humanly possible. Mm-hmm. He's uh, so luck- cool. He's so fucking bad at- I don't- okay, here's- here's a weird thing that I noticed. Why does Vulcan have the red tape? It doesn't go with his outfit. In fact, Maeda has the blue tape. Because he's cool. It's red is cool. What? But it's... It doesn't go with Vulcan's outfit. He should have blue. That's a good point. Because he's remind, blue! Remind me, by the way, there is a Maeda match I know you're gonna like that I will have to show you at some point. Oh yeah, for sure. I'm, th- I'm down. I, I'm, I'm, I'm down to grumpily look at Maeda. My it, it, the issue is that he is cool. Um, <laughs> he's like he's very like much he's Japanese CM Punk. To. Yeah, I don't think he's as skilled as CM Punk, but he is quite no. good. Yeah, that I mean, in the context that, that he's put in, I know friend of the channel Josh Barnett is a huge Maeda fan. Sorry, um, Josh. So I know you'll kill please, me. Please do not hurt me. Don't hurt you. Especially don't hurt Squill, because he's not saying anything too terrible. Don't hurt yeah. me. I know <laughs> you'll kill me. I'm, yeah. I am, I am five, six foot on a good day. Um, Go ahead, tell I, me how much you love Blade Runner. Uh, oh, yeah, I love Blade Runner. I love, I love Blade Runner 2049. Uh, um, uh, I watched it on the plane, and mm-hmm. I was awake the whole time, I swear. There you uh, go. It was. It, I love those movies. They make me smile. I I like the soundtrack. The soundtrack's really good. I listen to that uh, when I'm taking night walks sometimes. There you go. Now that we've said that, we can return to Baeda's actual match. We really are talking directly around this match. It's not a bad match. No, it, it's <laughs> the good. record. It's just that Maeda. This is like the worst match of the four, which doesn't say much. It's like a good match. Um, yeah, but everything around Maeda is is deeply funny, uh, and aside from a few of his matches, overshadows how great he can be. Mm-hmm. For sure. But yes, he is a badass. He's throwing shoot kicks. He's so a cool fucking sick cat. dude. Uh, but locally, Vulcan likes to swing as these boys attack one another with the Vulcan slap rush, uh, in Maeda's murderous kicks. Do you like alliteration? 
I do. Uh, the men manage to make it to the mat as they attempt to submit one another until they roll to the apron. Uh, they roll more, and somehow, some way, they are on equal footing. Yeah. Um, Vulcan is uh, a real worker's worker. Absolutely. Uh, he is. God bless him. You know, mm. Maeda is really. Th- it's. This is a terrible thing I'm about to say. Uh, yeah. Vulcan could definitely work a uh, Make a Wish kid. I, I uh, know what you're. I know you're I'm, talking. About, that's a little harsh on Maeda, but <laughs> it's very true though that uh, this is probably the one where it's the most funny that this is on his MMA record. Right. Yeah. <laughs> like, this is this is some fake ass grappling. Yeah. After sitting through nearly thirty to forty minutes of real sh- real ass graps. Mm-hmm. Um. Wow. Uh. Maeda is holding his own, all, own, always having some answer to Han's submissions. Uh, the boys twist around a while until Maeda goes for a bulldog, which Han slips out of to give Maeda these mean-ass knees to the side of the ribs. I do absolutely love whenever Maeda misses anything, he gets punished for it. When he misses a kick, or in Good that shit. case, yeah. Good shit. Big fan. I, I, that's something I like a lot about shoot style. Mm -hmm. Uh, is that there's always kind of, there's no bit where it's kind of like, why didn't they do this? Why didn't they hit X move onto them? They are clearly at a disadvantage. Yeah, there's an opening they go for. It's that, I guess, um, some of my issues with, so with regular pro wrestling escalation, you'll end up with things where it's like, well, they have to hit one move in order to then hit their finisher. Uh, it's like, Orange Cassidy is never going to finish a um, match with a beach break. He has to hit the beach break and then hit the orange punch. That Absolutely. That is how these things go. Something that's refreshing about shoot, and don't get me wrong, there's a time and a place for that, like in King's Road, where you have that sort of uh, escalation. But what's refreshing about shoot style from someone like me who watched almost exclusively American wrestling for a long time, or traditional American wrestling, uh, was that it feels like they're trying to finish the fight and that anything could finish it. Because there aren't Absolutely. special moves in shoot style. Like, you know what I mean? Like, they're, mm-hmm. they're signature offense, but it's like, if my thing is the heel hook, I could still conceivably beat you with an arm bar. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. I, I like that part about shoot style. Mm-hmm. Of course, this is 200% not my thing. Yeah. Uh I as established multiple times on this channel, I am a uh trash goblin. Yep. To put it lightly. Uh I've mm-hmm. been told I have the taste of I have redneck caviar taste in yep. pro wrestling. Uh it's apt. It makes sense. Uh but I I like to think that I can appreciate this a little bit more than uh yeah. Thumbs up. Anyway, putting myself great, over a little bit, but yeah. there's a great sense of fun from uh, Vulcan here. He Very seems much, like he's having a great time in a way yeah. that he doesn't necessarily because he's kind of he's not serious, but he's kind of bored in his other matches. And this is like rookie Vulcan as well, um, mm-hmm. so you know he's a little less uh, uh, jaded. Yeah, jaded, I guess. But like he looks like he's just having like a good time versus the uber serious Maeda. You know where you know where it come it's coming from? Where is that? His submission phases, which were not noted before. Uh but they're very apparent in this match. Uh Han has great submission phases. He's always yes. doing these great expressions for the most bored man on planet Earth at any given time. He is very good at doing submission phases. I, I he, do enjoy it because he's like he's like, oh shit. Like, it's a very, like, real, uh, if you've ever, like, grappled mm-hmm. in any kind of combat sport, when you get caught, there's a sense of, like, because you're still in the combat, you don't pause, but you mm-hmm. still, in your head, are just like, ah, oh, fuck. Yeah. Um, and it, he communicates that very well. Mm-hmm. He does a very good job mm-hmm. with that. Uh, I should say that, uh, he's good at 
doing faces when you're actually hitting the submission and receiving. He's a good catcher and receiver. One my mm-hmm. other thrower and receiver. Whatever. He's good at it. Sports analogy. Uh, he becomes too much for Han. Uh, uh, Maeda becomes too much for Han as he worms his way to the ropes. Um, then Maeda does a good shoot sell, then bashes Han's face in, like, likely for real. Uh, he <laughs> yeah. hits him with, like, a palm strike directly to the nose. It's pretty but, awesome. It's pretty sick. Yeah. Uh, and it seems to, like, really push his buttons to where he kind of activates, like, Old Testament Vulcan. Where he kind of just act becomes angry. Say, uh, say what you will about uh, stiffing your opponents, um, but Maeda is willing to take the abuse. So, true. of all of his faults, uh, Maeda is willing to take um, the take the receipt. So, For sure. pissing him off, it's like um, uh, Rick Ric Flair uh, yeah. for all of his failings as a human being. Oh, uh, we're talking about when he was like globe trotting on like the territory days, and if you really, his great thing is getting uh, fire out of baby faces as a heel, you know. Yeah. And he was talking about if the crowd wasn't reacting well, and because sometimes he shows in and he's the big man in town, so they're cheering for him, mm-hmm. uh, and the instead of the baby face, he would just start actually hitting the guy. Uh, until the guy got pissed off enough and started actually trying to clobber him, and That's then of awesome. course the you know the crowd goes crazy for him. Maeda, to some extent, is getting that out of Han. Yeah, for sure, I agree. Uh, it is while not good for the workplace, it is effective. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then Han seems to activate his his anger form. Uh, he begins to swing with a ba- a beastly attitude, attempting to kill Maeda with an uncharacteristic fury. Oh yeah, this uh, is this is before he's the Lord God of Rings, you know. So yes, uh, Han is doing a great job selling the offense of Maeda as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Maeda heel and Zagiri's uh Han directly in the face. It is gross. He gets knocked into the ropes and he just slowly stumbles. He gets like tumbles down. It's it's gross. It's a gross Enzigiri thing. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like a donkey kicking Zagiri. Anyways. Yes, yes, that's that's pretty spot on, really. Uh and then a Volk rush leads to Han trying to snap my aid his leg like a pencil. <laughs> yes. Uh, he uh, fake out spinning back chops to the future, uh, to do a takedown, which is awesome. I love that. Absolutely. Uh, Maeda somehow worms his way to getting on top of Han for an armbar attempt. And then one of the silliest, uh, interactions I've ever seen in a pro wrestling ring happens, especially in this context, where Vulcan does a cartoon banana slip, uh, on Maeda. So Maeda answers back with uh, another cartoon banana slip attack, uh, but that only leads to his head getting kicked in. Uh, kind of like our Loki uh, Chris Hero encounter, where Volk just starts stomping him out. Yeah. Just, just shoot, just kicks him in the face. It's As disgusting. Just gross. Uh, Han really wants to kick Maeda in the head more, but the ref stops him from to begin the 10 count? Yes. Uh, like I obvi- said, you can't follow your opponent to the ground unless it's a submission. It's, it's, it's pretty sick. It's pretty cool. Um, and then... What am I talking about? Okay, so I'm just going to read out my note verbatim. Uh, Isk, what... Hen is doing, but Maeda doesn't like it for a rope break. I'm a poet. Yes, I know really. it. Um, Maeda no sells a front kick, so Han hits an enzigiri. Uh, and then Maeda hits a shoot suplex, 
But Han wants to go home, so he attempts to break Maeda's leg for a tap out win. Yes, it is. Uh, that is Maeda's thing, by the way, that he would pass on to his students is that, uh, like, fisherman suplex or fisherman buster, um, which is, it, it looks kind of fun, especially when you translate it to a shoot environment, because you're mm-hmm. not used to, you're like, oh shit, there are suplexes, because it's so grounded. No, it is uh, very cool. And it is great that he's immediately punished by this. Yep. Um, yeah. I'm not crazy about this one. Uh, I, I still think it's good. But... It's a it's a fascinating match more than it is a good one, in my opinion. Because it's the unpacking the psychology of uh, Akira Maeda. Yes, uh, as he, uh, like stomps to his room in ring. More or mm-hmm. less, as he gets more and more uh, shooty mm. on Volk until it literally wraps around to Volk wanting to just straight up murder a. I don't know how old Maeda was at this time. He kind of looked like he was uh, getting a little schlubbier. We are going to fact check this right now with the power of Google. Relatively schlubbier, for the record. He, do- really he doesn't look in shape. bad shape. And he was never in amazing shape either. No, for either. sure. He's just, you know. Yeah. Old school. Uh, he's 33. He was 33 at the time. Mm-hmm. Okay. So he just kind of looks like a, a grown-ass man. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that was Akira Maeda versus Vulcan. Mm-hmm. Um, so, overall... What do you think about Volkan having gone down this journey and seeing the Russian wolf in his uh, his grandeur? Dude, Volkan rocks. I like this dude. Uh, I like I like how he's able to work a match. Uh, he's always very entertaining. Uh, so this is, might be an unexpected recommendation, but I am recommending one Volkan. Mm-hmm. Um, yes. So I kind of wrapped around, because on our initial watching of this match, I was indifferent, I would say, to Vulcan, mm-hmm. or specifically his matches, I would say. Uh, I liked his attitude, uh, and that's about it. I was kind of yeah. bored most of the time. But it kind of, I, after I hit it, I got a rewatch, I really started to appreciate the subtler aspects mm-hmm. to shoot style and uh rings specifically um i definitely wouldn't be re-watching these matches if it wasn't for uh this podcast but i appreciate it i i think it was uh a good development i very much enjoyed these matches one of us one of us not yet damn it i, I think I, there's I... something he's so fucking unique as a cuz he's not a He's not even like a, a catch wrestler. He's a he's a sambo, uh, a sambo mm-hmm. fighter, and he has such a unique aura because of that. Yep, he is wholly unique in the form of uh, shoot fi- uh, shoot uh, shoot style. And he would go on to like wildly change the history of MMA and wrestling mm-hmm. just by showing up. It's it's pretty sick. Big fan of the Volkster. Mm-hmm. Volker. Um, any other thoughts on him? Or um, just generally he's sick. He's got uh he's got a funky ass haircut. Yes, yes he does. Um oh I have to award smacked ass of the night or else the people will riot. Uh hang on. So we have a cure my Akira for the record is not the smacked ass of the night. Uh, well, I was just gonna say, assumably in Dagestan, there's like three approved haircuts. Yeah, uh, and one approved, fa- well, two, excuse me, forms of facial hair, none or chin strap. Yeah, chin strap, no mustache. Um, Dick, Dick Hood is yeah. not smacked ass of the night. Mm-hmm. Uh, because he looks like a Ninja Turtle without his shell. He he just well, he kind of just... looks like a, a genetic freak that isn't normal. Specifically, he looks like Bebop. He does look like Bebop. Mm-hmm. You are correct. Uh, it is not Kiyoshi Tamura, so that leaves us with Kiyoshi Kosaka. Kosaka. Um, sorry for calling you Yoshi. 
Mr. Kosaka. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just easier for my uh, Mario pilled brain to say. Uh, Smack yes. Death in the Night, Kyo- uh, Tiyoshi Kosaka. Uh, please take your award and get off my stage. That's what you get for getting uh, gifted a weird win over Fedor. You freak. He wanted a win over a Sambo guy. What a bastard. <laughs> he he politicked for that shit. I know it. Yeah, I mean, they would... Uh, as a Japanese fighter, you got some advantages uh, fighting over there. You know what they call him behind closed doors? What do they call him? They call him Yoshi Hogan. Damn. Yeah. Brutal. Yeah. Uh, do not contact your lawyers, Mr. Tiyoshi mm-hmm. uh, Kosaka. Uh, it is all love here at Bachi Bachi Book Club. Uh, we, we preach uh, pro wrestling, nature, happiness, all the core tenets mm-hmm. of... Uh, Anoki uh, friendshipism. Thank you. I have brain yeah. damage. Uh, and yeah, that's, that's all I've got for tonight. Yeah. Um, so tune in whenever the next one comes out and, uh, we are queued up for a very special episode, but I won't give, uh, give the game away yet. Yeah.